Can you beat Batman Arkham Origins without using detective mode? Do you actually care or do you just want to see me suffer through predator sections for the third time? G'day chaps, tis I, Clown Puncher 139 I embark on a quest to be the world's worst detective for the third time in a row and beat Batman Arkham Origins without the most overpowered tool in Batman's arsenal. Can my speedrunning skills get me through it, or will someone in particular give me trouble? Let's find out and get to the challenge. We naturally start at the Blackgate Riot, but if you've watched the Origins Slay Some, you'll know that you can't actually use detective mode until the tutorial for it because the game flat out disables it. Even if I wanted to look at some skeletons, the game literally doesn't let me. Skelephobes rejoice, necrophiles curl up and cry. This is not the video for you. As we progress through the prison, we find absolutely nothing blocking our path. Even the areas intended to be detective mode tutorials are easily skipped because speedrunners don't need that shiz. I not so swiftly defeated Killer Croc because I decided to play on hard mode for no logical reason and made my way back to the back cave and skipped some lore dumps, then headed back into the city to hunt some assassins. Unfortunately, immediately upon doing so, we run into the same problem as the church from Arkham City. And unlike that situation, we can't use some speedrun tech to skip this one. We have to drop smoke and grapple up to the gargoyle to progress this scene. The thugs don't even move until you grapple up, and you can't even get off this platform. I ended up just hanging out on the ground and they just kept shooting this area until I grappled up or died. They really wanted to make sure you couldn't skip this tutorial. So, only 20 minutes in, we have our first use of detective mode, but certainly not our last. In fact, it's only moments later we have our next use. No, not the crime scene, you dopes. The game deciding to just put it on for you completely out of your control. I did not press the button here, the game just needs to let you know there's an enemy behind this panel by flipping detective mode on after you exit this vent. It's completely pointless, but is not a one-time instance. Origins likes to activate detective mode on its own a lot for some reason, and you'll see more instances of it as we progress through the story. The rest of this section goes fine, but those auto flips really ticked me off. Combine that with the fourth crime scene, and we've already used detective mode far more than we probably should have for this game. Everything started to go fine for a while as I started hunting down Penguin, beating up Blue Slips in the process, and made my way to the industrial district for the pseudo predator room. There's only three guys to deal with, but seeing as we're outside and I have nowhere to hide, it wasn't exactly easy. And this is your friendly reminder that smoke bombs are literally the worst and will instantly flick on detective mode. I forgot that and dropped one without hesitation before being reminded that I was doing a stupid challenge. Lovely, so I take them all down with silent takedowns and move on to the final offer for a real predator section. I basically just did a bunch of silent takedowns without much variation. Everyone was completely unaware of my presence until the final two, whom I lured up with a knockout smash. It looks like I'm about to get this section absolutely perfect for probably the first time ever. And then I accidentally pressed the wrong bumper and used detective mode. Wonderful, why? Now, to give myself a tiny bit of credit back, I haven't played an Arkham game in months. The last time I did was all the way back in early September when I recorded the same challenge for Arkham City. By this point, my mind was still wired to Gotham Knights, which uses the left bumper for the grapple instead of the right. I was really rusty going into this challenge and decided that hard mode in the game with arguably the hardest combat encounters in the series was my best course of action. At the very least, it eventually got my muscle memory back on track, but it certainly took a while. I was able to perfectly replicate my actions on the second go around and actually take the final guys out, but man, that was a stupid mistake. And believe me, it wasn't a one-time thing I did either. You know the drill by now, navigate the final offer with absolutely no issues aside from a stupid misclick until we get to the theater, which was a pretty easy overall predator section. Though it's worth noting that this is probably the most difficult game when it comes to identifying enemies outside of detective mode. They definitely blend in with the background more than any other game because of their dull coloring. But this is still the first section of the game, so it's not going to be too hard. Inverted takedown this guy, backclaw his buddy after cutting him down, do another inverted takedown and get shot while I'm at it, escape, cut him down, and do yet another inverted takedown on the hostage taker, these guys just don't learn, do they, and finish it off with a glide kick, ground takedown. 
easy stuff, so let's pay Penguin a visit, get rudely interrupted by Deathstroke, beat the crap out of him, and head out. And it's at this point that, for some reason, my audio got corrupted, and I have no idea why. Thankfully, I don't need the audio for this video type, but it hurts my ears while I'm trying to write this script, and that's not fun. Don't say I don't suffer for y'all's entertainment. Anyway, I headed over to Lazy Towers, beat up the cops guarding the relay, then was randomly put into detective mode because the game felt like it! Again, I didn't press the button here. The game just decided to put me in detective mode to look at these random cops. Even though you can see them just fine in regular vision! Don't even get me started on the upcoming crime scene, you already know how long it is. Let's just go back to the Batcave for the worst gadget in the series and head to the GCPD for another outdoor predator section. At least these enemies have the decency to stand out in the snow, but seeing them doesn't make the section any easier. This is always one of the hardest sections in the game as is, so taking away detective mode is honestly just mean. It took me like four tries, and my successful run wasn't even clean in the slightest. I took out this guy near the ledge because he was giving me so much trouble in the previous runs that I just wanted him out of the way. Then I grappled up and took out the sniper and the other patrolling guy here at the bottom with a knockout smash to separate the rest of the group. I grappled up here and tried to drop down to catch this guy by surprise, but he immediately saw and shot me. Peripheral vision does in fact exist in these games. I took him down with batarangs, but had to run as his buddies came back around. I snuck around the exact same way and got one silently, then went right back up to get the last two with the remote claw, followed by ground takedowns. Not nearly the cleanest section, but this one has always sucked. What else is new? Heading inside the GCPD provides nothing noteworthy until the ever-terrifying swap room, where the game once again forces on detective mode! Seriously, Origins, I get it, there's something of note down here, you don't have to show me and force on the x-ray every time it happens! And then there's the remote clock combat tutorial where you're told to use the fire extinguisher on this group of cops. But unfortunately doing so will put smoke everywhere, and we all know what smoke means for this challenge. So, you know, don't do that, and instead just beat them up like a civilized vigilante. That leads us to the bullpen and our next predator section, and this one almost as hard as the last. Okay, maybe not that hard, but still pretty difficult. It's a really wide space with a lot of areas for the enemies to hide in, so gotta use all the takedowns at my disposal. Start with a silent takedown on this lone officer, then grapple up and nab an inverted takedown on this guy just before he gets away. That brought one of his buddies into the perfect position to be remote clawed into a propane tank and blown up. I grappled to the back of the room and saw two guys meandering in the corner, so glid down and took one out silently. While I distracted the rest of the guys with a fire extinguisher, I was just barely able to hit this guy with a battering as he was climbing down the ladder to take him down. They were all distracted on the ledge, so I dropped down and got one with a back claw, which thankfully took him out, as the ledge was just high enough to let gravity do the rest. I went back to the gargoyles, cut this guy down with his buddy right below him, then got said buddy on the exact same gargoyle because he's an idiot. This just left one, who I got with a battering, go round takedown. Not too bad, all things considered. And now we have that whole disruptor side arc, and even though I know the reason behind the panel not working, Batman must throw on detective mode to see for himself. Those of you keeping track at home, add this to your count, I'm not because I don't care. Into the holding cells I go with another combat section with a fire extinguisher for me to worry about. But I didn't need to worry for long as I had just bought the multi-ground takedown which made the whole thing completely trivial. Unfortunately, I was an idiot and prior muscle memory had me throw a batarang even after the section was already complete, right into the fire extinguisher blowing it up. Thankfully though, I had a quick reaction and was able to dive away so I didn't have to reset. This let me grab the disruptor and head back into the riot. Or it would. Except that the game still hates me and must have Batman look at the jamming panel despite me already disrupting it. Thanks game, I didn't really care. Moving on to the server room, where the exact same thing happens once again. Wonderful. I'm so happy at this current outcome. It's such a wonderful thing for the game to do. Wahoo! The rest of the PD would seemingly go off without a hitch, except that we escape Brandon by throwing down a smoke bomb. And wouldn't you know, 
Batman goes into detective mode right away here as well. I wanted to experiment here to see if I could maybe get a different outcome, but to do that I'd have to sit through the cutscene every single time and I don't want to do that. Just believe me that there's no way to avoid it so we can all go on with our lives. Either way, time to head into the sewers, which actually decides to play nice this time and not give me a challenge. There were in fact no moments the game decided to randomly flip on detective mode so I could move through unharmed. That led us to the Gotham Merchant's Bank for yet another predator section. Naturally, we start by taking out the jammer enemy, not that it matters since we don't use detective mode anyway, but it's an early easy takedown so I always take it. Then I patiently waited on this gargoyle for this guy to walk under so I could get an inverted takedown. I once again waited for another thug to climb the ladder so I could knock him down with a fully boosted remote batarang. This distracted them enough for me to get another inverted takedown on the same gargoyle, followed by a silent takedown on the other side of the room, leaving just two. They were so scared that they split up, letting me get one with an inverted takedown and interrogate the other since I forgot that was part of this section. Pretty easy, and the first time in a long time I got one of these on my first try. And wouldn't you believe it, our first objective while heading to the steel mill is yet another predator section. This one back outside, so we all know how this is gonna go. I literally start by immediately getting shot by a freaking spin bot, so that's a good indication of this game's current difficulty. And yet somehow he immediately lost me, letting me get a silent takedown and escape without any of the other guys even knowing I was there. This let me get two of them with the back claw before I grappled away to safety. I tried to get another from this angle, but he just didn't let me latch on, so I had to grapple away. On the plus side, it let me see one of these guys was trapped under the stairs and was just kinda floating on air. This game is complete, folks. He didn't even see me as I approached, so I just pulled him down with the back claw and he was knocked out. I did get seen by the other guys and shot, but this was too funny to not get a closer look at. I eventually made my way up to the sign, which let me put these two idiots over the ledge with the back claw, and I could finish everything by getting this last guy with a tried and true punch to the face. Could've gone better, but could've gone worse. I will take it. Into the steel mill we go, providing no challenge until we reach the elevator to the lower levels. You're supposed to do a crime scene on this guy, but the game progresses without you doing it all the same. So just don't bother and save yourself the trouble. Unfortunately, where we do have to bother is the next predator section in the drug lab. I start by taking out three guys with silent takedowns, finishing the last with a knockout smash to attract all the enemies to this point. This let me get two guys with propane tanks, but the second just decided to shake it off for some reason and kept moving. Lovely. It did let me get this guy with a knockout smash before the group got up though. I tried to use another tank, but it was way too far away, so I just couldn't. So instead I threw a sonic battering back here to lure this lone guy over and get him with another knockout smash. This didn't actually lead the last two over, but I was able to get them through the simple strategy of being sneaky and using gravity. Incredibly easy stuff for what's normally one of the most difficult rooms in the game. One drug trip with Copperhead later, we should be allowed to exit the steel mill in peace, but the game decides otherwise. Once again, it throws on detective mode out of my control to just have Batman casually observe this canister. Again, I don't like it, but there's nothing I can do. Nothing except head out to the Gotham Royal to take the assassins head on. And getting into the main lobby gave me no issues, but the lobby itself is problematic in this scenario as it's time for a predator section once more. It took me a few tries as, again, big room with a lot of open space for me to be seen. I start by pulling one guy over the ledge, then try to get another before they start swarming me, but I just barely miss getting him over and they of course shoot me. Naturally, they start shooting the gargoyles down, but in their distracted state, I'm able to get two with inverted takedowns. They unfortunately succeed in taking one of the gargoyles down though, so my options just grew a lot more limited. I distracted a guy by cutting one of the idiots down, then glid behind him for a silent takedown. I notice a guy at the bottom and jump in the grace to try to get him there, but he moves just as I get underneath him, so I hop out to get him with the wall. But one of his buddies sees and shoots me, so runaway time. This causes them to shoot down another gargoyle, so I'm really running out of breathing room here. On the plus side, this distraction lets me get one with a silent takedown and another with a batarang ground takedown for the sake of speed. There's only two guys left, so I end up knocking them both down with batarangs and ground takedowns. Even got pretty close to being shot by the last guy, but thankfully didn't because he was terrified. Hooray for terror! 
and the rest of the hotel goes off without any problems. There's no automatic detective mode for basically the whole thing until we get to the snowman bombs. Once again, force detective mode with absolutely nothing I can do about it. But the rest of the hotel went fine, and we're at yet another predator section. Who'da thunk it? It took me a long time, but that's really nothing new for this room. It always takes forever in challenges. I start with a ledge takedown to get everyone into the wider area where I can see them, and just barely miss out on an inverted takedown. So instead, I go for a knockout smash on this guy to start splitting the party up. I consider going for this guy on the bridge, but there's a mine, so I don't risk it, and instead grab another knockout smash on this guy in the corner. I scan the room for my prey, and eventually see a lone guy in the center, so grab yet another knockout smash on him. Unfortunately, this causes them to arm the gargoyles to blow, so I'm going to be stuck on the ground for the rest of this section. I sneak my way between corners of the room, but all the guys are up on top, so it's kinda just a worthless waste of time. I try sneaking around up top then, but they're a tad too organized for me to get any of them alone. And of course, there are also mines everywhere now, so sneaking around is just that much harder and leads me to getting shot. I hide in the grates and am eventually able to grab a takedown, then escape as Joker tells me I've only got three left. I head up top and throw down a sonic battering to lure someone over and eventually get him with a propane tank. At this point, I know that the goons will never get together, so I sneak up on one guy investigating the body and get him with a corner takedown. That just leaves one, who I get with another corner cover batarang, followed by a ground takedown. A bit of a long one, but it worked in the end, so that's what matters. One fight with Bane that took way more attempts than I'd like to admit later, and we go through a long string of nothing interesting happening. We get the glue grenade, head underground, reach the GCPD morgue to scan another corpse. Unlike the elevator guy though, there's no way around it. And we have to scan it to progress the story. But thankfully, that's all we need to do for quite a while, as we can invade and escape Bane's lair no problem, head over to the Pioneer's Bridge and start the Firefly arc with absolutely no challenges. And wouldn't you know that our next hurdle is yet another Predator section. This one by far the hardest in the game aside from the GCPD rooftop. But as you'd expect, I was still able to get it. I start by heading to the bottom layer and getting a silent takedown on this guy, then throwing away my element of surprise by rounding a corner and getting seen. Lovely. So I try to run, but get the wrong grapple point and have to quickly improvise before of course getting shot. This unfortunately causes them to shoot down one of the gargoyles, so I just lost one of my escape paths. I am able to trap one guy in glue and use the distraction to get a headset guy with an inverted takedown though. In the middle of all the commotion, I'm able to get one guy with a knockout smash as one of his buddies is scanning a gargoyle, then get another with a great takedown since I really just want to increase my body count at this point. Once again, commotion ensues, but I somehow don't get found and can get the jammer guy with a silent takedown. I trap yet another guy in glue, then use a battering ground takedown on who I thought was the second to last guy, just barely missing this one in my peripherals. I hear him after the fact though, so run and take cover near the glue guy. I forget that the interrogation mechanic is in play for this section, so don't just end it by getting the glue takedown. Instead, I patiently wait in the corner for a corner takedown and finish the room. Honestly, not too bad, all things considered, especially considering my previous attempt. Unfortunately, this wind streak doesn't keep up for long. As we head farther up the bridge, we reach a mini predator room that forces us into detective mode upon entering for literally no reason. Why, game? Why? Obviously, the section itself goes literally perfect, just two double takedowns on the four enemies. It just stupidly decides to put us in detective mode when there's literally nothing to be looking at in this section. What was the point of this game? Thankfully, that's all, and we can do this platforming section and the fight at the end of the bridge with no issues, leading back to this exact same mini predator. And this one is frankly too short for me to talk about though, so whatever, let's just skip it and move on to Firefly who naturally doesn't cause any problems since it's a giant fight. So we can tie him up and head back to the Batcave to bring Alfred back to life. Unfortunately again, despite knowing exactly where he is, Batman insists on flipping on detective mode to find him for real. What does that make, like, eight, nine times the game has done this by itself? You're really cramping my style, Arkham Origins. Whatever, as you all know by now, it doesn't matter, so we can just move on to the final Blackgate Riot. And thankfully, this one doesn't give us any force uses whatsoever. We just have the obligatory final predators section. But 
honestly, this one is so easy, I don't even think I need to talk about it. It's the biggest difficulty drop in the game as is because of just how much you can cheese it, and I sprinkled a less than healthy amount of cheese onto this run. So I don't really think this one is worth highlighting. Now you'd think that'd be the end of the video, that's how all the other runs ended after all, with an obligatory Final Predator section. But Arkham Origins is the first and only game in the series that actually lets us talk about a boss at the end of this challenge. After killing and reviving Bane, we're met with only the second stealth boss we've had to face in this challenge after Mr. Freeze, TN1 Bane. And honestly, playing it without detective mode is still just as easy. It's not like you need to use it that much since the room is just a big rectangle hallway with a single line in the middle, and Bane is constantly stomping around the place. So it's not exactly hard to find him. And unlike Mr. Freeze, being seen by Bane isn't an immediate game over, as you can just throw a glue grenade to stun him in place for a few seconds while you escape to a vent. As scary as the boss was to fight, watching it back is kinda humiliating. I mean, Bane was literally charging right at me and he still rounded a corner for literally no reason. It doesn't really do this fight justice, which was genuinely scary to play through. If I hadn't taken advantage of the electric fences, I don't know if I would have actually beaten it. But whatever, I did, and that basically wraps up the game. No other force uses of detective mode, and no other predator sections to speak of. So, yeah, that's basically all I got. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and try it if you really want to make predator sections just a bit harder, but otherwise, you don't really need to bother. It's just kind of a whatever challenge. It exists, and I just kind of said whatever the whole time. I'm really not looking forward to Arkham Knight. Not because it'd be difficult, no, I honestly think it'll be the easiest of the saga. But just because of how few Predator sections that game has. If you'll recall, there's only like... 9 total? And it does have Jason Todd for me to look forward to, so... Silver Lining, maybe? We'll just have to wait and find out. Regardless, do all the YouTube stuff because I've got a really fun game lined up for the next video that you're absolutely going to want to see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps.